Americans are stuck in an age of famine, and they don't like it. Why are Americans so bleak about the economy? Employment is plentiful and unemployment is back to pre-pandemic lows, but sentiment is in the trash. The obvious answer is that inflation is at a 40-year high and wages are largely failing to keep up. But there's a deeper force underlying why Americans are so upset, famine. Availability or lack of products is as critical an issue as rising prices. Americans last experienced this phenomenon in the 1970s, with long queues at gas stations. Today, more than two years after the pandemic, generations of Americans of varying incomes face a much wider range of shortages. This is in many ways a new age of famine. Look at the housing market. There are several houses for sale. Real estate inventory is at a record low. A recently opened home for a 1,800 square foot townhouse in Alexandria, just outside of DC, has attracted more than 100 people. It was a tree-based end unit, but among other things the bathrooms needed updating. In the end, 13 bids came in in the property, which was listed for just under $500,000, sold for $580,000. Stories abound about ever-increasing home values and prices, but as the real estate agent who sold that property told me, the real question is where will the other 12 bidders go, let alone the 99 other people who have toured this place. The shortages extend beyond housing. Many families feel that even if they diligently save and get higher paying jobs or raises during their pandemic lockdown, they still can't move forward. One reason is that they want to buy something, houses, cars, dishwashers, but often can't even get it at a very high price. Car stocks are in an unprecedented decline, so people pay more than the sticker price, but the color or model they want isn't always available. Similarly, grocery stores and restaurants are struggling to keep items in stock. Before the pandemic, the share of products not on store shelves was typically around 5%. Most customers barely noticed. Recently, it's approached 12 to 15%, sometimes even worse. In many cases, Americans get there as if there was someone else first. Someone with more money, said Peter Atwater, president of Financial Insights. Americans are not accustomed to this kind of shortage, adding to the frustration that politicians have spent most of the past year saying their supply chains will be fixed, soon. Instead, the problems keep coming. As diverse as baby food shortages, Russia's war in Ukraine triggering a food supply crisis, and China's COVID-19 lockdown, which shuts factories and delays shipments. It now takes an unprecedented 100 days on average for manufacturers to obtain material, the longest delay since the industry began tracking it in the late 1980s. Some blame the media for the gloom of Americans, arguing that journalists focused too much on the negatives like high prices and the recent stock market crash. But reporters covered strong business news extensively, including the fact that this job recovery was much faster than the 1990, 2001, and 2007 recessions. Still, Americans are unlikely to feel better until supplies return to more normal levels. Meanwhile, Americans have become ready to focus on the negatives. The past two years have been a time of great chronic stress as communities fear the coronavirus and have to navigate the ever-changing advice for workplaces, schools, and even family reunions. Psychologists say that this type of constant stress makes people more likely to focus on negative news. When we believe the economy is in bad shape, the information we tend to look for and the evidence we remember reinforce this belief, said Anne de Prince, a professor of psychology at the University of Denver. It reinforces the view that we have no control. Much of daily life spirals out of control. Consider this. Americans have been told that vaccines will largely contain the epidemic. Then, last summer, the Delta wave hit. Then came the unsuccessful U.S. withdrawal from Afghanistan. Then Omicron. And now the war in Ukraine, plus another variant is circulating. There are many challenges to reopening schools and childcare facilities. There are no vaccines for children under five yet, and the return to offices remains chaotic. As long as the drama keeps coming, people will continue to feel a lack of control over their lives and their options. What can the White House do? President Biden can't magically get dishwashers back in stock or make a surge in homes for sale. But the president can focus back on supply issues and often talk about what his team is doing to address those issues in the short and long term, just as he does during the holiday shopping season. Extracting oil from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve was a good start this spring. It will also be important to ensure that major West Coast ports do not close this summer when union contract negotiations take place. There is good economic news, but until Americans get what they want easily, 
many will still feel like they can't move forward. 